The Slovenian Croatian peninsula of Istria is one of Europe's oldest settlement areas. The Pearl of Adria, with an eventful history and much multicultural flair. A rich interface between both Mediterranean and medieval cultures. Slovenia contains only a small part of Istria's northern coastline. And Kopa is its economic center and most important harbor city. The old town can be entered through the last remaining 12 gates of the city's former defensive wall. Traveling to the center of the old town, its narrow streets, buildings and fine palaces have each witnessed the city's turbulent history. A Greek colony became a Roman trading center. Next, Slavs settled here. And finally, under the protection of the Venetian Serenissima, the city reached its zenith. An archway in the Praetorian Palace leads to a classic Venetian square with loggia and typical bell tower. The baptistry is situated behind the cathedral. There are palaces in townhouses, and this Gothic fontico was used for the storage of surplus grain, which was distributed to the townsfolk in years of hardship. Then follows a tangle of tiny, narrow streets and the old fishing district. In its heyday, the city boomed with wine, oil, salt and fish, and many merchants and craftsmen from Italy settled here. And the Palazzo Belgramoni Taco became the region's museum. Today, Copa is Slovenia's window to the world and the country's only seaport. Izola is also an historic town. The highest point of the peninsula is dominated by a church. Built in the 14th century and dedicated to Saint Mother. Close by, the famous Venice-inspired Palazzo Bersinghi Degli Ughi was built, a Baroque palace constructed at the end of the 18th century. Our route to the harbour travelled through narrow alleys lined by tall buildings and what is known as Big Square. Today, small yachts and fishing boats lie at anchor, and pleasure boats also set off from here. Calm has returned, and trade has moved to other ports, but tourism flourishes here. Historic townhouses and late Gothic palaces. At first glance, the city's history seems to have come to a standstill and its areas look like a backdrop from the past. Tourism has now breathed fresh life into this old fishing city. In the new town with its beautiful buildings and small parks, a Mediterranean lifestyle is the order of the day. Zola has blossomed once again. The medieval town of Peran is located on a narrow promontory that juts out into Peran Bay like the bow of a ship. On a cliff above the old town is the St. George Church. The 
The bell tower on the town's fortified walls provides a splendid view of the mainland, a maze of rooftops and the main square. In the middle of Peral and set back from the main alleys is a monastic church that was built by the Order of the Minorites at the beginning of the 14th century. The well-maintained cloister has always been a special place for both spiritual and cultural life. For more than 500 years, the town was under Venetian rule, a time when it took on the form which we see today. And from the wide-ranging trade network of the Serenissima, Piran profited well. The charm and flair of its old alleys reflect the history of this idyllic town whose origin dates back to the 5th century. Ancient Greeks, Romans, Slavs, a German emperor, the Venetians and the Habsburgs, they all wanted this town. And it prospered accordingly. Peran has survived it all. Porto Roz is the only real resort on the Slovenian Riviera, with several hotels lining its waterfront. Since the Danube monarchy, it has been a fashionable meeting place of the elite of Central Europe. Rose Harbour is well known for its sandy beach and good leisure facilities. And on the opposite foothills of the bay, within the grounds of Forma Viva, are various modern stone sculptures created by respected sculptors. The Croatian Istrian seduces with a charming inland, but above all, with enchanting coastal towns. Umak in the north is the center of this fully developed coastline. And the bay's promenade is popular with the region's holidaymakers. The local fishermen continue to go about their work and in the harbour their boats await their next trip out to sea. The fishing village is now a tourist resort. The Romans founded the settlement of Umacus in a small bay of this narrow peninsula. From this, a small town developed, and in 1268 it fell to Venice and became an important port. The town's narrow lanes and ancient stone buildings exude a Mediterranean atmosphere, although a feeling of medieval times is always present. Food and drink are also popular outside the gates of the old town. And seafood restaurants abound. The city's well-conserved walls and towers were built in the 14th century. Further south, Porich is picturesquely situated on a peninsula, and City Hall reveals much of its history. In 1267, Porich, as Istria's first city, was affiliated to the Serenissima, and 
palaces, squares and religious buildings were constructed. But Poric is also famous for this early Byzantine masterpiece, the Euphrasius Basilica. Arcades frame the atrium of the church complex, which is considered to be the most important architectural ensemble in Croatia. In the former bishop's palace, church treasures are on display and in the basement, ancient tombs. The small garden next to the bishop's residence is covered with the remains of a mosaic floor from the oratory of the Holy Morris. The highlight of the complex is the basilica's large interior with its magnificent abscess mosaics whose variety of vivid color is a magnificent sight. Porich is a little gem with a great history and culture and even now, Pearl of the Adriatic. The historic center of Rovinia is located on a shell-shaped peninsula further south on the Adriatic coast. Seen from the sea, it's one of the most stunning of the Adriatic's harbor cities. harmonious and compact, a perfect cityscape. The buildings with their colorful shining facades are densely packed. A bell tower marks the highest point. Next, the Santa Euphemia Basilica. Venetian Baroque all round harmonic architecture and fine works of art, and the stone sarcophagus of the saint whose bones are stored and worshipped here. A campanile stood on this spot for 70 years prior to the commencement of the basilica's construction, and it took 26 years to build this, the highest bell tower in Istria. The wonderful view from here is just reward for the adventurous climb up the 60 meter high tower. Rovinia has always been a much sought after place. And so it has remained right up until the present day. The romantic pearl of the Croatian Riviera has lost nothing of its original charm. Rovinia encapsulates history, culture and beauty. Ferryboats travel from Fazana to an archipelago of 14 islands once well loved by the Romans. Monks built early Christian churches and monasteries in this secluded area, on the foundations of the Roman summer palaces. A sacred place. The Brioni Islands were a restricted area during Josip Tito's lifetime. In 1947, the Yugoslav president recognized their recreational and historic value and had many luxurious facilities built here for both himself and his political friends. This malarial swamp was transformed into Tito's private residence. And various sections of the island became popular leisure areas. Nature conservation was also introduced.
On the west coast of the peninsula and located above the Dobrika Gulf are the sprawling ruins of a huge Byzantine castrum. Within its walls was a small town that was inhabited up until the 16th century. Its foundations are still in good condition. Situated close to the southern tip of the Istrian peninsula is Pula, the oldest city on Croatia's eastern Adriatic coast. The largest square of the old town and today's main square was originally the site of a Roman forum. Next to the town hall is the well-preserved Temple of Augustus that dates back to 14 AD and was dedicated to the Roman Emperor. Prior to Roman times, it was Greek historians who first mentioned Pula in connection with a city founded by the Argonauts. Here too followed the Romans, the power of Constantinople, and finally Venice. The city has been influenced by all these eras. Miraculously, the town's monumental Roman amphitheater has remained intact and is now one of the six largest and most well-preserved examples of its kind. The 105 meter wide amphitheater accommodated 23,000 spectators. It must have been a breathtaking sight. In the ancient Roman Empire, amphitheaters were extremely popular and the usual bread and games benefited the reign of the Roman emperors. Pula is an intriguing blend of history. Inland, visible from afar and romantically perched on a hill, is probably the most famous village in Istria, Motovun. The lush vineyards on the hillsides are reminiscent of Tuscany. Here flourish the grapes of the popular Malvasia and Terran wines. Typical narrow lanes, stone buildings and the original wall that dates back to the 13th and 14th centuries still surround the old town and castle. A massive gate tower with a panoramic view of the surrounding countryside once protected the town from unwanted visitors. The ring-shaped medieval town grew up to the bell tower. The Sveti Stjebjan church and its battlements make it appear like a castle keep. It also served as a defensive tower. Here too, in the remote hinterland, there were various power struggles, but it was Venice that added its own architectural stamp with both an inner and outer defensive wall. The impression of a fort refuge has remained, albeit one now stormed by tourists. In the fertile countryside lies yet another Istrian gem, Hum, the smallest town in the world. With its well-preserved gate, cobblestones and single lane, The Sveti Jeronim Gate and fortified bell tower are also situated in an elevated position. The 
Bhutan's few inhabitants are like one large family who live within the medieval ambience of this town of sand and limestone and who mainly work on the land. During the day, the town appears empty as many people work in the fields beyond. But all this was once so different. This fortified town was a heavily defended border station between Venetia and Habsburg. With its alphabetical sculptures, the Glagolitic Alley ends in whom? The Glagolitsa script is an important symbol of Croatia's national identity. At Lovran, we arrive at Kvarna Bay. Here, the buildings cling to the remains of the city and a tower and gate have managed to survive the rigors of time. The town is situated on a small peninsula and was once dependent upon the Kingdom of Croatia. Patriarchate of Aquileia, the Count of Pazin, and from 1374, the Habsburg monarchy. Lovran was favored in Roman times as a summer residence, and in the Middle Ages, both shipping and trade flourished here. The city's name is derived from the laurel trees which grow in abundance on the surrounding slopes of Gorica Hill and along the coast. Many well-preserved 17th and 18th century buildings form the heart of the old town. Today it contains the ambience of a K&K summer residence and Mediterranean fishing port. From Lovran, the 12-kilometer-long beach promenade of Longomare leads north and finally ends in Opatia. The elegance of this place continues to remind us of bygone days. At the time of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, this formerly Abazia was one of the most frequently visited resorts of the monarchy. a meeting place of European nobility, bankers and prominent artists. An elite that disappeared with the conclusion of the monarchy. However, the atmosphere of the Belle Epoque lives on. Opatia has blossomed an atmospheric place. Indeed, both Emperor Franz Josef and Elizabeth nostalgically grace some of the bars. A number of late 19th century buildings are reminiscent of the first days of seaside holidaymaking. The return to comfort, tradition and discerning visitors has led to the successful restoration of both townscape and buildings. In the once most fashionable seaside resort on the Adriatic, this, the largest city on the Istrian east coast, is where our journey comes to an end. Picturesque landscapes, medieval cities and a fantastic coastline, picture postcard perfect. Istria is a beauty with many faces, a rediscovered Edria dream, an almost forgotten paradise. <laughs>